Good morning folks, this is Ola and I'm doing a quick tutorial this morning before I go to work because I'm not going to have time to do one tonight. So uh, I have a picture here of um, a planet which is just from Shutterstock which I bought and today we're going to be having a look at the last thing down here in the layers panel which is um, the mask tool which looks like this rectangle with a circle cut out. Looks maybe like a camera, I don't know. Um, first things I'm going to do is crop the canvas because we have lots of pixels out here we don't need so just in the interest of reminding you stuff we've already learned I'm going to hit C and then drag an area out here that I want to keep hit enter and just resize my canvas um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what a mask does so a mask is basically Let's, let's go back to the start and show you that we have the eraser tool, right? So um, at the moment you'll see I'm not allowed to edit this because it'll this little dialogue will come up. So if we look here, we'll see that this is a smart object. Now, you know, I've mentioned those a couple of times. Smart object contents must be rasterized before proceeding. Edit content will be. What, what a smart object does is it means that I can scale this down and uh, if uh, at a later point in my video I'm like, ah, you know what, I need to scale it back up. Uh, the scale is basically Control T, by the way, or Command T on your keyboard to bring up this dialog. So when you select your layer, if you hit Control T, you'll get a box, and then you can drag the corners. If you hold Shift, you'll. If you don't hold Shift, you'll get this kind of weird, unproportional drag. But if you hold Shift, you get to uh, drag something and keep it the same size. If you hold Shift and Alt, it will do it from the middle, which is also really useful. So yeah, a smart object is basically, what it's going to do is it's going to remember this object at its full size. So if I can scale this down, and then later on I can scale it up, and you'll see that it's going to be just as sharp. If we rasterize it, I'm going to right click, you'll see I can scale it down, of course, but if I scale this back up now, what's going to happen is it's it's forgotten about all the information. When you rasterize it, it basically commits to remembering the picture at exactly this size. Which means if you scale it down in the end, um, you will, you know, that's what it's going to remember, and it won't remember the picture at its like fullest as it is now. So um, what? Yeah, what I can do is I'm going to hit the erase tool, and then I've got my little. Um, brushes palette here. I'm going to select this this kind of um, eraser and and I'm going to, it does pretty much exactly what you would expect it to. Now the problem with this is that later on if I'm like ah maybe I shouldn't have erased that uh, well you're kind of screwed because the eraser commits permanently. Um, all these pixels are gone forever unless you can unless they're still in the undo which is control Alt Z or Command Alt Z on the map, like we've said before. So you go back in stages. So Control Z goes all the way back to your last move, and then Control Alt Z comes back stage by stage. So unless they're still committed in your memory, then you're not uh, you're not going to be able to bring that pixel data back. However, and this is where masks come in. If we select a mask, we'll see we've we've added this. Um, it's kind of like a white a white solid, I guess, but nothing has changed. Now, a mask is basically made from two colors, black and white. If something is white, then it means it's completely opaque, which is what you're seeing here. There's full pixel data. If this is black, and you can almost treat this like a, a new layer. So just imagine this is, um, just imagine this is a layer, like a white filled layer, because that's exactly what it is. And that, that's what you can see here. The only difference is you can only draw in black and white. Okay. Um, so what we're essentially going to be doing here is uh, I'm going to select the brush tool here. So go to brush tool. Uh, I'm going to bring my brush menu back in. And we're going to have a look at brushes in a couple of days, just so you guys know. So, uh, But yeah, essentially what I'm going to be doing is um, drawing a black and white mask and anything that's black is going to stay completely invisible and anything that's white is going to stay completely transparent so um, that's essentially what we're doing I, I just drew that so that you guys could see what we're going to do 
Uh, now what I'm going to do is try and separate the the Earth. Uh, it's not really an Earth. Uh, it's probably a planet that I don't know because I didn't really pay attention in uh, astronomy class, mainly because we didn't have astronomy class. But um, so what I'm going to do is start like painting out here. And this could take a while, so I'm just going to do this really quick and nasty. I'm going to make my brush bigger. And just come out here. Come out here. And, okay, so let's just pretend that this is a clean job. And that I've done it well, which I haven't. It looks like a... A distorted Satsuma right now, but never mind. Um, let's pretend this is a good job. As you can see, what I've done here is I've been drawing with black, and I've drawn black around the outside, and black has become invisible, and white is still transparent. If I go through the middle here, um, you can do that. What you can also do is different different um, colors between white and black. So anything like anywhere in between. And I'm going to select a brush. If you look at the edge of the brush here, we'll show you, as you can see, there's a fall off from where it goes from white to black. So this is going to have like a softer edge. And as you can see, that will in turn, it's creating like a gray and the gray will be semi-transparent. So it's not going to be just black or white. It's going to be semi-transparent. And so in that way, we can like fade the edges off something as well. Now, obviously what I'm doing here is terrible. If you, come up to the mask and shift click you can turn the mask off temporarily so you can see like what you had before and what you have after um, you can as you see there's like a little padlock here which means we're locked together if you unclick that padlock you can move this around so what you're doing here is as you can see I'm actually moving that um, the mask in different ways which is kind of useful when like maybe you have a window painted right and then you have a background and you want to just move the backgrounds but not the window uh, you can literally just click on that and then just move one or the other um, so what I've done there is drawn like a really shitty mask so what I'm going to do, do right do is delete that mask um, but the, yeah those are the basics of the mask uh, I'm going to show you tomorrow like how to uh, oh sorry maybe not tomorrow but um how to make selections and what we can do here is I'm going to redo what I just did but a bit cleaner this is so what I've made here is a rectangular uh, circular selection and if I go over to make the mask now with my layer selected you'll see it's just automatically made a mask with that selection which is super useful and just to go back again on retouch and uh, you know refresh your mind if we hit control I we can also invert the mask which is really useful um, so what we're doing there is just swapping black for white and white for black which is doing exactly what you would expect it to if I right click and uh, there's a refine mask which I will uh, which brings up this dialog which I will go into when we go into making like proper selections but what you can do is get your mask and then tweak like how far in or how far out it comes as we can see here uh, you can feather the selection so maybe you've made a hard one oh a hard one um, a hard selection and you want to uh, change the way it looks but after it's been made you can do that here so here I'm now like adding a feather and we, there's a smart detection which um, we'll see when we're trying to cut out trees and stuff we'll pick up like little branches and make it a hell of a lot easier to uh, extract really complex um, things like hair on a background or tree branches on a background or whatever so uh, that's that I'm gonna actually undo that move and what I'm gonna do here is show you one last thing which is if we delete this mask, delete, wait, mask. if you hold alt when you make a mask you can also make a mask with completely black it's not like a big shortcut but you know I thought it might be a time saver and then you can just paint in white because by default when you make one uh, if you press it you will make a white one and then you will have to paint everything else out if you want to do it the other way just be aware that that's an option so just just hit alt when you have the mask and you'll create a black mask and then you'll just have to paint in the, the other stuff with white 
So there we go, that's masks, a quick introduction to masks and what they do and why they're so powerful because as you can see if I did have this data and I wanted to bring it back, all you have to do is literally disable the mask and we still have it. Unlike the erase tool, we've not done anything destructively and that's the way you want to learn, learn Photoshop. You want to learn ways in which you can do um, various processes but without like screwing yourself over. So if you've made a mistake and at a later date you want to come back and bring something back that's the way I'm going to try and teach you the program because in most in most uh, cases there's ways to do it so that you can actually like cover yourself so uh, thanks for watching guys I'll see you tomorrow